I have a to-do list and it's pretty long and this is just one of them <laughs> and I wake up in the morning in the midst of, in the midst of my job simultaneously crossing off stuff off this to-do list on an hourly basis and I'll go to sleep and my desire is for this to-do list to be shorter then it makes me feel happier it makes me feel like I've done something yeah. I've been going to sleep now and the to-do list is longer than when I started every time, yeah. every time hey, tell me about you know it. the work the, the, you know my work is 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 growing you know I'm, I'm doing well at my job shout out to that not worried about you know anything right because I'm ensuring that my stakeholders there are satisfied with the work that I'm doing there and simultaneously I'm ensuring that my stakeholders in the music area like my 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 fan base my supporters etc are also being satisfied um yeah. that, that comes with a lot of different things and so the fact that i can no longer just go to sleep at 2 a.m and be like wow i've done a lot instead i'm going to sleep at 2 a.m like oh my god there's still so much to do <laughs> and i gotta wake up early and then go back to work that's number one um mm. number two uh you know so my last my last project airplane mode that hit the billboard chart hit the itunes chart and oh. um i'm i'm thankful i'm thankful for you know my supporters that really enabled that to happen uh because obviously i can't do that myself it's not like i'm buying a thousand copies to make that happen so uh <laughs> <laughs> though though some do <laughs> that's that's neither here nor there um but um to do that again and again to say okay i want to i have a fan base growing in let's say atlanta okay getting a show in atlanta and actually like building that uh presence while also doing the same thing in dallas while also doing the same thing in this growing base in toronto while also oh hey there's people hitting me up in tokyo japan saying that they you know love my music um to say, okay, I've done, I know how to set up a show in the Bay Area. Now let's just do that in all these different places. That's an, enti that's an entire job. That, like, that's literally an entire job. Yeah. Simultaneously, you know, that's going to need media around that, right? If I, if I show up in a spot, I would love for local media in Atlanta to know that this guy who's performing in Atlanta, you know, this is who he is. But to do that and all, that's another literal job. It's like to, yeah. to, to, to do these things, it was dope in the context of like Bay Area. <laughs> it was dope in the context of like, you know, Sorry, leveraging you. like who I know in the areas and environments that I'm in, but like, I can't be everywhere at the same time. Um, and, you know, on top of that, like more people are coming in, right? You have to respond to more people. You have to, uh, right. you know, all those different things. Like these are all literal jobs, like to do marketing is a literal job. And so while I know how to do all the different jobs, to do them all successfully and the way that they need to, to, to be done um, at scale, it's just not, it's not feasible. Not in the current situation that I have where I'm like, I literally have two jobs. I literally have two jobs. Yes. Yeah. Hey man, I, I get it. I mean, and that's a real part of the process, having to give that stuff up, wean yourself off some of of that crack of I, I do it all myself you know what it I mean? is it is crack. <laughs> it is crack you know um but it, <laughs> because short term is more self-gratifying but it's detrimental long term once you hit yeah. a certain threshold and totally. you actually have to become comfortable not being the best yeah. right on your team in that area which is a weird thing when you're someone who has done a lot of things and even have the capacity to be really really great at it However, you're saying, I'm going to be great at this. And that's a discipline, right? Because this is my role. I'm going to be a monster in this spot. So I need to find somebody who has the capacity to be great in that spot and let them surpass me. So I don't have to focus on that at all. Because if I get somebody who's not as good as me, right? Right now, I'm just looking over my shoulder, trying to correct them. And now they're a headache. You get what I mean? Yeah, yeah 100%. 100%. <laughs> Delegation is very, very tough. Um, especially when you don't trust the people that you work with mm -hmm. and there I've, you know, I, I know of cases where I work with people and they don't deliver anywhere close to like satisfactory. 
Um, and then the question is like, do I, you know, I've, I've, I've had an example where like, you know, I'm working with a videographer, person falls through. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to put together my own music video. Like I've had mm -hmm. to do that. I've had to be like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, this person offers to help with reaching out to media, you know, does a subpar job. I'm like, whatever, I'll do it myself. And, you know, triple up, quadruple up over whatever they were able to do, right? Like I've been in those situations, but I've also been in situations where like hand something off to somebody and then they kill it. They like create something that I would have never even thought to do because they, they are hundred percent focused. They're determined, they're willing. And that so it's beautiful. Right. And so you can't, you can't let the, it's like basketball. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to be a ball hog because you don't trust your teammates, I mean, at the end of the day, you're just going to exhaust yourself out. Right. Yep. Uh, you have to let your other team try. Uh, of course, there's like a whole pre-team process of like choosing your teammates. So you would hope that the people that you've cho chosen, you've vetted them out already. But then after you've vetted them out, like let them shoot the ball. If they miss, they miss. Once they make <laughs> it, you celebrate them making it, right? You, yeah. If you are in a coach position, you help them get better and you just play the game. Like you're, mm. I, it's not like I make every shot that I take. So True. I should treat that same level of mercy and grace with my team members getting there instead of being like, oh, I'm going to do it. Because at the end of the day, especially if you're in a, a growing business, like if your business is really growing, um, then sure, like celebrate the work that you've done. But now that means that your responsibility is not just to grow it by yourself, but to bring other people with you that also believe in your mission, that believe in you because you've invested in yourself. And to go back to what you were saying earlier, like, don't don't ask for people to invest in you too early like if you haven't even shown that you can invest in yourself and make something happen like it's yeah. a lot like you can't blame people for being like hey that looks dope i want to be a part of it it's not necessarily just because they want the shiny object although a lot of people do but it's more like hey i see sean's commitment in what he's done what he's built for himself i want to be a part of that i want to see how i can enable that to grow even further by leveraging whatever skills and experiences that I have and bring that to the table. Like people get attracted to want to hire or sorry to interview for a company because they've seen what other people have done for that company already. And so you mm -hmm. have to be that person and invite that. Like it should be a blessing and be like, Hey, I need more people. Oh, but I've like proven something is dope enough that other people actually want to come. So that's that's where I'm at, where it's like, okay, let me like talk to these people and I'm like getting the team together right now. It's gonna be gotcha. cool. 2020 is gonna be fun. Hey man, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs>